Hey, what's up everybody? Dylan here from Iceberg TV. Today, we're bringing back Weird Stuff Wednesday. We got the new Ching Juju in the mesoplastic, thanks to Scott Stokely. Let's check it out. The Ching Juju was PDJ approved back in 2004. 20 years later, Scott Stokely has purchased the original Juju mold and recreated it in this really nice premium mesoplastic. Now, what makes the Juju special or unique? I'm sure you're wondering. It's these cool, quote unquote, accelerator contour technology. That's not my <laughs> verbiage. That's the verbiage literally on the mold of the disc. It says it right there. So it gives you different little fun spots where you can put your thumb. And then this is the new Scott Stokely version. I mean, they look beautiful. Absolute fire. Two, four, minus one, zero. I haven't thrown, I've thrown this one obviously, but I have not thrown the Scott Stokely one yet. We'll throw the oldie and then the newie. I would say that flew exactly according to the flight numbers. That held turn the whole way. All right, this is really exciting. The plastic definitely feels nicer than the old one for sure, without a doubt. Oh, wow, it just got a great kick. So because of those little indentations underneath the disc, you actually do have some bumps underneath the disc that you have to contend with when it comes to where you're gonna put your fingers. When I used to power grip everything, I probably wouldn't have noticed it, but I've transitioned to throwing a fan grip with all my putters. And with the fan grip, because my fingers will be sprawled out a little bit more, I definitely noticed those bumps underneath the disc. And I definitely played a role in that second throw kind of just slipping out of my hand. So I'm going to have to mess around with the hand position a little bit, see if we can't find a spot where I can comfortably fan grip on the disc. Neither of those shots were inside the circle, so we're going to line up a 25 footer here and see how these feel on the green. The only thing I'm contending with is the bumps under the disc. So I just need to find a spot where I'm not really getting interfered with by the bumps. Hole two is gonna be a great hole for the hyzer shot. I'll probably throw the original one and then the new one in that order, basically on every hole. All right. It's a grip I think I'm happy with. Oh yes, that's perfect. Fade up the hill. That's definitely inside the circle. Let's see if we can't recreate that line. This one's definitely the new one, certainly a touch domier. The other one's very flat on top. This one's got a little bit more depth to it and a little more dome. Very true to the flight numbers. That held a lot straighter than I expected it to. Really nice flyer. And I'll definitely throw a few shots trying a few different thumb placements to see if that's something that helps. Um, if I was to be someone who bagged a Ching Juju, I would likely number all of the divots around the rim, just like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, kind of like a clock. So then I can <laughs> remember which thumb slot that I like the best because I don't know you guys, but unless I number it down, I'd be likely to forget which one actually feels the best for me. All right, I'm gonna use the second to last divot on this putt here. This is where the first shot landed. It's already, it's such a new feeling having a divot for my thumb. Oh, it's, that rotated exactly one time. I was able to get literally no spin. All right, now I'm gonna try the exactly in the middle. This, oh, well also, this isn't gonna spin either. I, I can already tell. Oh! Oh, that is so funky. It felt accurate out of the hand, but I felt like I got no spin, way less spin than my normal putt. Hole three is a 277 foot par three, slightly downhill. The flight I'm getting on these jujus is perfect for the shot. Just need to execute this. Release it up in the air, let the minus one take over, carry us to the basket. Turn, 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 turn. Oh, wow. That was a nice line. That was a potential ace run if it misses that tree. This one's certainly a little deeper. I'll show you the side profiles in the next one, but this one's definitely a bit deeper, a little domier. Mm. 
And the new one maybe is a touch more stable than the old one, but I do think I released them slightly differently. So you can see this one's just a little bigger and a little taller looking. Definitely a bit more domey. When I originally heard that Scott Stokely had bought the old Ching molds, that was something that really just delighted me. And I'm someone who loves throwing the old discontinued Quest AT, Ching discs, all those really old brands that back in the day didn't really work out or pan out. Those discs are really important when it comes to disc golf history in general. And for an old kind of coveted disc to be reinvented and re-released, that's something that's really exciting for me. Um, another brand that comes to mind is Discwing. They had one of the fastest drivers ever made at the time called the Quarter K. So maybe Scott Stokely can sort of find a niche and start purchasing, tracking down, and developing some of these really old cool molds, but in new and probably slightly better plastics. All right, I've got an 18 footer lined up here. I'm gonna try the grip closest to the rim here. That actually felt incredible out of the hand. Okay, wait a minute. I might be on to something here. Whoa. Those came out of my hand absolutely dead straight with some really nice pace. Let's back it up on the next few putts. My ideal placement right might be just right as close to the rim as it can possibly get with still using one of the divots. It flew good, but it felt horrendous. Threw that about as hard as I could, and it went like 160 feet. And I'm at about the halfway point of the nine hole round today. And so far, after those last couple putts, I'm definitely feeling more promise for this disc on the green as opposed to off the tee. If I can work out a grip that's going to be comfortable, we may have a chance. But right now, off the tee, it's pretty uncomfortable. So that first shot did pretty much park the hole, but I don't want to putt a 10 footer. I want to put a 25 footer. So we're going to grab this and back it up a little bit. All right, we're actually just going to back it up straight all the way to circle's edge. Oldie and then newie. This is about just right at 30 feet, I think maybe 28. Oh, that feels really nice. Using this first closest to the rim div, it actually feels really nice coming out of my hand as a putter. Getting nice like pop, decent spin, still not as much as my normal putt with the pixel. But I think a lot of people are actually going to like these as a putting putter if they have a baseline in the non mesoplastic. I think a lot of people will really like these on the green. All right, hole five. We're going to try out a full on power grip, just four finger power grip here. Let's see if that helps out with the release off the tee. I had a feeling that was going to happen. New York Yankees. All right. Let's play the turn here on this one. There it is. It's not super uncomfortable to power grip, but I just much prefer fan gripping my putters. And this is probably more of a question for the older fans of the channel. Probably those of you in their late 30s, early 40s, who have been playing disc golf for 10, 15 plus years. If there was one mold that Scott Stokely could buy and then produce, what mold would that be? Comment down below. All right, so this thing just kicked and rolled like 150 feet off that little 10 foot shot. I was about to give up and then I just found it. So there was a long time where I was using the pinch grip for a lot of my drivers, mid ranges and putters, which means I'm pinching my index and my thumb and then almost doing like a modified fan with the rest of my fingers. That seems to be the most comfortable grip with the Juju. And if you get one, I would advise you try some sort of variation of pinch grip. I haven't done a pinch grip in a long time, but it feels a lot more solid than it's felt on the previous throws. Yeah, look at that release. That's so much better. Getting the absolutely dead straight flight it's supposed to get. This one's a touch more stable. Oh man, this pinch grip is absolute money in comparison to the fan or the power grip. See, you can't just judge a disc before you try a few different things. The fan was a no-go, the power grip was a no-go, but the pinch grip feels like absolute shmoney. 
And so far, my impression of the new Ching Juju is that it's just a hair more stable than the original Ching Juju. And I do think that has something to do with the fact that it is just a hair domier. Again, that's just my speculation, but as it stands currently, it does seem like the new run is just a very slight tick more stable than the old one. Hole seven, down the hill, to the right, Ching Juju. Let's give this thing an ace run. That's a good line for this hole, but it's a touch to left. It's already 100 feet downhill, so we don't really need to throw it quite so high. That is a chance of going in. Oh, okay. That had to be really close. That was a very good line. All right, got a tricky little straddle-ish 20-footer. Bam! Just got to go nice and direct with these things. Bam. Yeah, that's nice. Those really aren't bad to putt with. Once you find which thumb contour fits your hand size perfectly, they come out nice and straight and quite zippy. Hole 8 is going to definitely be a tricky shot. I think the old Ching Choo Choo, Ching, Ching Choo Choo, Ching Choo Choo train is just flippy enough to get the hyzer flip to flip up and go straight. <laughs> that was incredible. No way. All right, let's see if we can twice or it's luck that. <sighs> is it luck? That's two park jobs on an extremely tight backhand tunnel shot. I usually mess that one up. To park it twice, that definitely says good things about the Ching Juju. Man, once I unlocked that pinch grip, dug deep into the memory banks, trying to come up with a solution of how I can throw this thing, decided that the pinch grip is in fact the solution to the problems I was having. All of a sudden, it's the best, it's the best putter ever. Just like that, one little change, you can go from like only terrible shots to only really awesome shots. And it's funny how just one little thing can completely change how it's going. And just like that, two tap-in birdies approved in 2004, 20 years ago, double birdies with the Ching Juju. One old, one new. Now the last throw of the day is a tricky, tight gap backhand turnover up the left side. It's really gonna test my abilities with the Juju. When you give it height and a touch of Anheuser, let the disc do the rest. Ah, oh, such a tough gap. All right, we get one last tee shot with the Juju today. Come on, Dylan. Up in the air, hit the gap. Yes. It actually started to fade out a little bit at the end. It's going to be a circle two look. Hopefully we can knock down one last birdie for the day. Well, all right, everybody. Ching Juju, absolutely fire. Definitely something I'm gonna put in the bag just because I find it super fun to throw. Now that I have the pinch grip strategy, I think I'm gonna be able to actually throw this guy really well. I'll probably write on it pinch grip just so I don't forget. It's a little cheesy, but sometimes that's something that can be really helpful to remember the specific cue you're working on at that given point in your disc golf career. But I feel like I'm the undisputed king of reviewing weird discs and I don't think there's anybody else that's making YouTube videos that's more passionate about weird discs than I am. So if you have any weird discs, feel free to contact me. I'd love to review, review them on the channel. Subscribe for more videos. I'll see you guys in the next one. Shout out to Power Grip, Iceberg 10, 10% off. See you guys in the next video and take care.